Sean Underwood's Vice President of Government for Shadow Dragon. It's great to see you, Sean. Thanks for joining me. What is the biggest need right now that OSINT professionals bring to you to tell you they need help with? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, in the last couple of weeks, we're seeing a greater need within around executive protection. So while we support a variety of other mission sets within the United States government, we've seen a growing need working with threat management professionals. So a lot of times they're dealing with an overwhelming amount of information, not just alerts they're getting off of social media, but tips that are actually coming from law enforcement partners. So how do they process that information within a very short amount of time that allows them to identify potential threats and non-threats so that they can actually get it into their overall battle rhythms and processes. What are the tools that they're using and what are the tools that maybe organizations could use to greater potential to sort through all of that stuff? Yeah, so we work with organizations very closely um, doing live point in time collection in a very ethical way where we're able to take a tip and lead coming in being able to sort across, you know, hundreds of different sources at once to identify other personas and aliases that they may be operating under. Typically, when you're dealing with someone that is in the heightened emotional state or can be very manic, they're not just operating under one social media account, they're operating under many. Mm -hmm. So at times they may abandon an account or they may get kicked off a social media account and open others. How do you identify all the different accounts that they have and which one's the most accurate on? Mm -hmm. So that's really important for a lot of folks that are actually doing threat management, where they can actually collect that information, see the type of state of mind that they're in, see if they're in close proximity to their protectee. And so there, there's a lot of things that actually kind of get into like take into consideration. I ask all the time about the cyber threat landscape and, and how the trajectory is changing. How's the trajectory changing in this type of, of threat yeah, so, you know, we're seeing this kind of, you know, shift and, and modify. So within cyber, you know, you see a lot of the same traditional actors. You see the same espionage actors relating with the different, you know, countries, you know, seeing a lot dealing with the ransomware actors and criminal actors. Um, within sort of, we'll say around executive protection and threat management, we're seeing sort of a shift in terms of like, they've been dealing with overwhelming amount of data for years. But what we're seeing is, you know, how do we actually understand and pivot between multiple different tool sets? Um, that's one thing that we're, we're trying to focus on is, you know, how do vendors actually work with other vendors mm -hmm. to actually get the government a, a better solution that they need? And so I think that's where we're kind of at right now within the- Is the type of data that organizations are receiving and having to parse in the way that you've described, mm -hmm. is, the, is that changing in addition to the the way the threats are changing the way you just described it? Uh, so a little bit. So, you know, a lot of it is, you know, how do we actually do collection? Then how do we actually then apply machine learning or artificial intelligence to information that's been collected? So, you know, we're not dealing with, you know, things that are manipulated or incorrectly, you know, perceived. Yeah. Uh, the, the collection piece of it strikes me as maybe the easiest part of it. The difficulty, I imagine, is in knowing what to keep, knowing what is real, knowing yeah. what is accurate, and all of that. So the, the collection phase can actually be very difficult in itself. Mm -hmm. um, the reason being is, you know, social media networking sources isn't just, you know, 20 or 30 resources where you think it's, you know, TikTok, Instagram, True Social, Facebook. You actually get into review sites, you get into hobby sites, you get into, you know, Mastodon servers where folks that left different social media sites over the last few years and went to set up their own, you know, you're dealing with hundreds of different Mastodon sites, which are kind of serve as their own little sort of echo chambers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, social media networking sites, you're actually getting to, you know, hundreds. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just that, you know, yeah. core 20, 30 that people think of. Has that become the primary place where organizations should look for the kind of information that you're talking about? Yeah, so, and the reason being is because, you know, sometimes it's not like just a 22 year old that, that's making a threat on Discord. Sometimes you have a 55 year old that's operating on other social media sites or other networking sites where they're making these types of, of threats. And so not just the ability to identify an alert, but to investigate. What's the solution to determining whether somebody making a threat is really serious about it? Or is that, does that involve just getting inside the mind of the person that's doing so. Are there tools that can help with that? Yeah, so a lot of it that comes down to threat management. So a lot of times people think threat management is risk management and it's not. It's actually, it's its own sort of like science and art sort of mix of the two. 
um, where you, you kind of have to look at the individual, the state of mind that they're in. Um, and then also looking at, you know, what's their proximity to weapons and also the proximity to the protecting of themselves. So if someone's making threat and that happens to be a 17 year old kid in Scotland, you know, maybe not a concern right now, but if you have an individual that, or that's then taking a trip over to Scotland, maybe that gets raised up. You know, we also have to take a look off, is it a, a one-time claim or is this a, a person that has been making threats for, you know, many times over a long period of time? John, it's great to have you here. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you.